When the war began, it was not over slavery. Slavery was one of the causes that led the South to secede, but then the war was fought over whether the states had the right to leave when they believed the Constitution was being violated, or if the Union must be preserved at all costs. At the beginning of the war, most of the Union soldiers were fighting for the Union, not to end slavery. But there was a section in Congress called the Radical Republicans. They were critical of Lincoln and urged him to immediately free the slaves. They weren't nearly a majority of the Congress or a majority of the people. So Lincoln was able to say that the war was only for the preservation of the Union and had nothing to do with slavery. If the war had ended in the first two years, slavery would not have been destroyed. This actually almost happened in 1862 before Robert E. Lee took over command of the Army of Northern Virginia. Lincoln had always been against slavery, but as president, he didn't immediately free the southern slaves and even overturned attempts of generals to free the slaves in the regions under their control, as both John C. Fremont and David Hunter had attempted. In both cases, Lincoln overturned their attempts to start emancipation. He didn't do this because he was in favor of slavery. He did it because the northern people would not have rallied around a call to fight against slavery, and because he didn't really have the constitutional authority to do it. He wrote after the emancipation on April 4, 1864. I am naturally anti-slavery. If slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. I cannot remember when I did not so think and feel. And yet I have never understood that the presidency conferred upon me an unrestricted right to act officially upon this judgment and feeling. It was in the oath I took that I would, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. I could not take the office without taking the oath. Nor was it my view that I might take an oath to get power and break the oath using the power. I had publicly declared this many times and in many ways. When, early in the war, General Fremont attempted military emancipation, I forbade it, because I did not then think it an indispensable necessity. When, a little later, General Cameron, then Secretary of War, suggested the arming of the blacks, I objected, because I did not yet think it an indispensable necessity. When, still later, General Hunter attempted military emancipation, I again forbade it, because I did not yet think the indispensable necessity had come. When in March and May and July 1862 I made earnest and successive appeals to the border states to favor compensated emancipation, I believed the indispensable necessity for military emancipation and arming the blacks would come, unless averted by that measure. They declined the proposition, and I was, in my best judgment, driven to the alternative of either surrendering the Union and with it the Constitution, or of laying strong hand upon the colored element. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.